Yeah. Hello, and welcome back to HWL Radio Sports. I'm here with the co host. Tony Ellis from Don't Stop Corporation, guys. It's Friday, June 8th, 2018, a day before my birthday. June 9th, my birthday tomorrow, Hollywood. Just one day before. Let's do an early celebration. Here we go. <laughs> well, got a big fight this weekend. Mm-hmm. Charlo and Trout. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He got, I mean, you got 30 in old Charlo and Trout 31 and 4. And this is ironic what I looked up too. They got uh, 50% knockout in Charlo, 49% knockout in Trout. He got 17 knockout, Charlo got 15. And then they 154. They, the, the height goes to Charlo, 5'11 to 5'9. The reach goes to Charlo, 73 to 72. Then you got an orthodox against a southpaw. And then here's the most important thing. You got a four-year age gap. Charlo 28, Trout 32. What you think? Man, I'm wondering who the – I'm really wondering who the crowd going to be with because uh, Trout and Charlo come from Texas. they both Texas natives. So that's going to be hard right there <laughs> for Texas to decide who they want, the new guy or the old school guy that's been putting in the work. Well, the new guy's putting in work too, though. Yeah, they're from Houston. Yeah, 27. Toronto from Houston. But they fighting in L.A. at the Staples Center. It's going to be interesting, too, fighting there. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying. Every time somebody fights, you know, they kind of carry carry their fans with them, the little crowd. You know how, like, uh, when we did the Fever game, we had some of the Washington people there. Last week we had some of the New York people there. I'm, I'm wondering who's going to bring that Houston crowd. Like, who are they going to be cheering for? Is it going to be Trout or Charlo? Because that's going to be a hard one for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's true. That's a good point, too. But they say that Trout, he's no journeyman either. He's a former world champion, and he comes to fight. He yeah. He comes to fight. That's what I'm saying. Like, Trout, he's more of a, a Mayweather type of fighter, but he'll knock you out still. But uh, Trout, I mean, Charlo, he's knocking motherfuckers clean out. <laughs> like, his last few fights... Uh, he must have found this niche because he's getting people out. Both of them, the brother, Charlo brothers, they getting people out of there. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a dandy, man. I tell you, it's gonna be a good fight, man. I was I, I was man, you can go, boy. That'd be nice, man. Oh uh, yeah, we, I tell you, we gonna go to the boxing things here soon. We yeah, gonna man, go. These dudes, these dudes here, man. And like I said, I I don't know, boy, was been a journeyman like that that uh. The trout, I and mean, he's been on journey, man. He's thirty-two. He's a nice. I mean, and they say his the soft his the soft paw style is 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 very unique too in him. Yeah, you know, so. it's gonna be it's gonna be a good fight, regardless mm-hmm. of whoever wins. It's definitely gonna be a good fight. So, do you think trout having a four-year age experience is gonna be a difference in the fight? Uh, I believe it's gonna play a, a a big big role in the fight, but at the same time. You know, Charlo, he's a little polished off as a youngster. So it's like he it's like he's like one of them people like if you well experienced. No, nah, like if you was in the neighborhood, like you'd be like, right. Man, you got an old soul. Right, right. So he could have some of some of the little tricks of the trade trout gonna try to throw out there, he might already know. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Okay, uh, with no Saturday. Mm-hmm. With no what Saturday about, night. What about that Jeff Horn and that motherfucker Terrence Crawford? Crawford. 32-0 versus 18-0, 12 KOs for Horn, 23 KOs for Crawford. You know, it's going to be interesting. Uh, Horn is the underdog, though. He's an underdog. He has an unconventional style, but they told him. Here's the thing right here, man. I was just thinking about the two. They told Horn to go in and apply pressure, 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 pressure on Crawford because Crawford is a dangerous finisher, so you, they try to take him out early. Because if not, his strength has been at the end. And he's able to switch stance at will. Yeah, but this is the whole thing that we're trying to figure out. Because you know he, you know he's moving up. So we're going to see if he can take his power up into the welterweight division. Right. But he relied heavy on his speed, too. It's he's relied heavy with his... He tried, that's his biggest advantage. He uses speed to his quickness. I mean, to his advantage. But based on record and everything and experience, you got to give it to Crawford. I think I think Horn gonna surprise him. I, I gotta get an edge to Crawford. Mm-hmm. Yeah, base because they said they said they've never seen a guy in current boxing right now that switches his stance while he's fighting. And that's a, that's a very unique thing right there to do. And it's also can prove 
uh, pivotal in a fight, too. When you got a certain stand, but you just switch at will and still can fight dominant, that's what he bring to the table. Yeah, he's pound for pound, like one of the be- He's up there going towards number one, Terrence That's Crawford. what they said. That's what they said, Terrence Crawford, yeah. 147 pound division. I mean, just, uh, you talk about out of 32 fights, 23 KOs. I oh, mean, yeah. Come on, man. And big boxing fans, this is. This is our month. This is our month because it, it takes out boxing takes off from this month on throughout the year. Because I know they've been missing in action in May. Right, right. Well, yeah, you're right. Because the picks up all the way all the way to the fall. You're right. August, September, and uh, July, it picks up. I noticed that a lot of a lot of possible fights come August. Yeah, and you. I know. I mean, I don't know if you heard about it, but you heard Anthony Joshua then ducked. He done ducked Deontay Wilder. I can't believe that. And then, you know, the last dude uh, Deontay Wilder beat, the Louise King Kong Ortiz. Right. Yeah, he uh, he got ducked by the Dylan White, another person that won a shot at uh, <laughs> Anthony Joshua or Deontay Wilder. I, I, well, I, I can see Wilder ducking Joshua. I can see him. No, I no. Him. Wilder ain't ducked Joshua. Joshua ducked Wilder. Joshua ducked Wilder. Joshua was ducking Wilder. Why, though? What they say is it... Uh, is it a promotion thing? Is it really scared of them? I mean, this is what I think. Like I said uh, in the last show we did on him, Anthony Joshua, all his KOs came from combinations. Like he would break you down and then KO you. Deontay Wilder, the motherfucker got the Midas touch. <laughs> he touches people and they going down. He don't need no combination. He don't need nothing. He, look, he don't need no salt. He don't need no motherfucking mustard, no ketchup. All he needs is that straight motherfucking right hand to come in contact no, with he's you. Tough. He's, a tough, he's a tough fighter, too. I've seen him. And I, I'll tell you what, when you you put me on him, I never heard about him. When you tell me about him, and I watched the last fight, and I just watch how he back his, you know, he talk a lot of stuff, he backs it up. I got nothing but man respect for him. Mm-hmm. And he earned my respect because he's tough. I mean, he's tough. He back, he walked the walk and talked the talk. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they said some things about him. He was a little wild, this and that, but he he he's gonna be one of the best he's he's the best he's the best big thing in the heavyweight division, something like that. Yeah, but this is the this is where uh the little well, like tricky tricky little politics come into play and a little bit of seasoned racism in there. Because he's he's America's best. You got Earl Spence, but Earl Spence ain't doing like Deontay Wilder's doing. I mean, he's like one punch, sending motherfuckers into comas, <laughs> seizures, <laughs> everything. Like mm-hmm. Earl Spence, he's exciting to watch. But you know, don't nobody knock nobody out like a heavyweight. Yeah. Yeah, but it's going to be amazing to be seen on that because I tell you what, man, if they do fight. I thought you said oh, um, the, pr- 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 the promoter put a bunch of money up on this. You said it was a billion dollars. Oh, no, he got a billion dollars, but when I looked into it, it's not like everybody thinks the mil- the billion dollars is. It's like spread it out. Okay. Because when you told me that, I thought, I said, this is definitely going to happen now because of the, the money thing. But yeah. it's, not, it's not actually like everybody thinking it is. Yeah, he got a billion dollar budget throughout some years. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So that's going to be the show for today. So go ahead and shoot your shot. You guys have a great day. Have a great weekend. And remember, always remember, be good to yourself as well as to others. Thank you. All right. And there you have it. Another great show at HWR Radio Sports. Go over to HWRRadio.com. Download the music app. Make sure you check out the sponsors page. And like I always say, hit my motherfucking music. And if you don't hear the music, it's because you didn't go over to HWRRadio.com. Download the music app. And we out.